Hi, my name is Sanjay Prakash and I uh, am the principal consultant of an architectural firm uh, and uh, we are known in the area of uh, ecologically conscious architecture, water conservation, energy conservation and a slew of technologies that go with that. Earth matters because it's our only home. And this is not just an abstract philosophical concept, but something that each one of us can uh, can act upon in order partly through lifestyle changes and through design changes, so as to just do a little bit for preserving what we call uh, a lifestyle that can be allowed by the Earth to exist. In the last 10 years or so, humankind has exceeded the capacity of the, the bioregenerative capacity of the earth and therefore it matters even more. And what are these little lifestyle changes that I am talking about? Well, to begin with, in order to conserve huge quantities of water, you could try becoming vegetarian. Secondly, you could just choose to remember to put in a cloth bag in your car or cycle, which is what I use to go to the market uh, to buy provisions so that you don't have to get plastic bags back. You can also <coughs> try to restrict your air travel as much as possible and these are all possible things and these are all things which I have tried out in my life in recent times. More than 50 years ago, an arch villain in a Superman comic book said something very philosophical and perceptive. He was building a time machine to send Superman into outer space and he said, we are all interested in the future because that's where we plan to spend the rest of our life. Well, as an architectural firm, the future is where we at least plan to spend the rest of our lives and so it's important for us to understand what is the future of architecture. Most people think that the future of architecture will be more of the same. That is, the same as the highest tech present. More high rises, more glass and metal, more artificial lights, more skylights, more heat from glass with more air conditioning, more golf communities, all platinum, green and gated, more water guzzlers, urban heat islands, more cars certainly, more cars, is really is that really the future we are envisaging for ourselves? Go back. More cars certainly, more cars, is that the future that we are envisaging for ourselves? More money, more throughput, more energy, more CO2, more waste, more water, more and more and more consumption. No, all this will soon be the past of design, representing the best of the age of oil. No, the future belongs to the dematerialization of the age of electronics and communication. It belongs to the symbiotic approaches that biotechnology allows. The future belongs to the carbon freedom that wind and hydrogen energy will provide us in the near future. It belongs to the resource efficiency of the nanotechnology revolution as exemplified by these two examples, the one on the left which is a basically a dust free uh, glass, this is the molecular structure of that and the one on the right which is what is called a hypercapacitor, a lifetime of charge can be stored in a certain pattern of molecules. Progressive work embodies this new spirit of the future and how can such a vision be realized? It can be realized by much use of glass but correctly sized and shaded. We should not use glass indiscriminately. It's a wonder material but it has to be used sparingly such as these examples from our works. By efficient lighting such as this example on the left which has uh, this street lamp which uh, has an evening and then a night mode, the evening mode is a CFL it is, and then the night mode is an LED so a small uh, panel, a sol small solar panel can manage the entire night. It's realized by personalized lighting and air conditioning which serves the user and not the whole space such as the stall space on the right where the air conditioning is let in from below, it's called displacement ventilation and it serves just the area where the people are and doesn't cool the entire space. The future, in the future we will be working with controlled daylight and using natural free cooling such as this mist example that you see on the right mist has the capacity to uh, free cool as it is called the outside space and uh, 
cut down the distinction between the outside and the inside. So in the future, we will not be shutting out nature from sealed artificial interiors, as given by these examples from the hospitality sector. Like the human skin, which has multiple functions, future architectural skins will have simultaneous functions, surfaces for simultaneously producing heat, cool electricity, water, food and leisure such as this example of a cafeteria roof which you see in the section on the top right where all these resources are created by the same set of square meters of surface area. The future will be realized by reducing carbon emissions. This building is the ashram building where every user has their own tree and there are such a large quantity of vegetation and all the vegetation is owned by the residents as it were that it will never really become sparse. It will also be realized by using waste energy such as, such as at this large office complex in Gurgaon where uh, the energy that is used to generate the electricity, the waste heat is then recovered and reused and then the waste heat of that waste heat is further re recovered and used as hot water. By being future ready, for example, by having hybrid cars or electric cars to charge up in the basement by park and in fact in a science fiction version of this scenario, the cars themselves would be the generator that would run the building as people came in to work, they would drive their hybrid cars in with their hydrogen fuel to make fuel for the building, make energy for the building. Or being ready for distributed captive power cogeneration as at this, again at this example of a building on the right where uh, the electricity is distributed in a small local grid. By using local living material, whether it is bamboo in Shanghai or slate in Uttaranchal. Materials with little embodied energy, local stone quarried from the foundations, earth, soil blocks, uh, all materials and processes with no beginning and no end. Uh, this is my living room right here which is getting constructed. It's a shutterless dome originally using methods uh, that the Egyptian masons used to use in ancient times and then rediscovered and adapted by some of us. From cradle to grave, grave to cradle, material becomes waste, waste becomes material. The TZ housing complex on the right is probably the largest of its kind in the premium housing segment which uses compressed soil blocks as, a basic, as its basic material. Yet, the future will not be realized through these technological innovations alone. We will have to prioritize human values like spending time with family, friends and with nature. Without that, the food for the soul as they call it will not uh, be complete. We will have to do this with a fusion of traditional wisdom with postmodern knowledge, such as these examples which are actually modern buildings using completely traditional wisdom and yet suffused with a bit of uh, postmodern knowledge. Sure. And finally, by the utmost respect for water as a basic resource. Water is not very expensive until it runs out and then of course its cost is infinity. Uh, some of these examples are from our work, some are from others. The top left is a regenerated lake in Panna, which is about two acres large. And in the middle is a picture of our own garden that we are sitting on right now, which is basically watered by our waste shower and kitchen water. So you see the piping system being laid there. So it's not the sculptural qualities of space, but efficient running the living metabolism of architecture which is